Experiments are a big part of science. They're used to show us the deeper parts of the world and humanity in ways that we could never have expected. Two years ago, I put some soil and some plants inside of this jar. From raising a chimp, aside from a normal baby, to watching people abuse power in a prison setting, sometimes experiments don't go as planned. And sometimes those experiments have terrible outcomes. Here are 15 science experiments that went wrong. <laughs> Number 15. Chimp Brain Chips Everyday technology advances. Concepts that were once part of science fiction books have become a reality. Now when you hear something like the metaverse, it's not so crazy anymore. One thing that makes science fiction a reality are brain chips. For as long as science fiction has been around, people have imagined robotic chips being implanted into human brains. When it comes to Elon Musk's Neuralink, this brings that technology one step closer. But unfortunately for one chimp, this technology had become deadly. In February, Elon Musk had confirmed that a monkey died in his Neuralink project. Now what Neuralink does or aims to do is enable brains to connect and communicate with computers. And it's Musk's company that began to test this hardware on a monkey, and that monkey pierced in the process. Somehow Elon Musk cuts denied animal cruelty accusations, but it does seem like implanting Bluetooth-enabled chips into monkeys' brains is a little harsh. That might be one example where science fiction should remain in the books. To win this one on a positive note, Neuralink claims they've been making progress despite the negativity. In one instance, they claim that monkeys can play Pong, you know, the computer game. But the crazy part is that the monkeys could play the game with just their minds alone. Neuralink said that this happened after the chip fed the information from the monkey's neurons into a decoder, which would then use to predict the page's intended hand movements, allowing the output from the decoder to be used to move the cursor instead of the page or manipulating the joystick. Don't worry, we don't understand it either. Now, let's get ready for today's open discussion. Comments go wrong, because it's the outcome that proves to be scary. Take for example this image from above. At first glance, it looks like the deer is missing half his face. But then on second glance, you might look and see that this deer has two heads in one. The person who took the photo, who opted to remain anonymous, reported that after encountering the deer, he found a tag on the animal that said property of a lab that he couldn't make out. The tag had become smudged, but just because he couldn't make out the name of the lab doesn't hide the fact that this would be a science experiment that went wrong. The deer was found in Yellowstone National Park, and he was acting pretty erratic so it's amazing that the person who took this photo was able to snap the shot. So what was the lab testing on this animal? Is this two-headed animal the result of a lab test? Or did the animal already have two heads and that red stuff on the face is a result of the experiment gone wrong? What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below with the hashtag open discussion. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly. Number 14. Eden Reality Show Every day, different scientists and organizations are trying out different experiments on people. Because experiments lead to discovery, it also leads to statistics that can help to better understand human nature. But sometimes, some places probably shouldn't be doing experiments, like reality television shows. Now they're not outright experiments in the lab, but they're designed to test the depths of the human soul. Take for example the reality show Eaton, which was supposed to be a survival-style social experiment where the contestants had to build a self-sufficient community and it was all based on the foundation of the most basic food and living environment. It was one of those situations where someone was curious about how people would act in a certain situation, and someone decided to create a reality show based on that. What could go wrong? The show saw 23 people left stranded in the Scottish Highlands with only four crew members and cameras to document how people would survive if they had to start all over again with zero technology. Again, what could go wrong? Some of the rules were that the contestants were told that they would be away from civilized society for one whole year, March 2016 to March 2017. Now that whole question of what could go wrong, we think a lot went wrong given the fact that only four episodes aired of the show. Out of the whole year of footage, only four episodes. They were an hour long and there had been rumors that several cast members had left the show, but no one knew why. What's being said is that the show transformed into the Lord of the Flies silence dynamic 
and there were a lot of dark things that happened that couldn't make it to air. The sad thing is that most participants started the show thinking that everything would go well, and people would work together and pull off a harmonious time on the island. But it was the opposite, and now there's going to be a special show showing just exactly what happened. Maybe we don't want to know. Number 13. Water has feelings. Hey, slow down drinking that water because it has feelings. That's right, water can have feelings. We're going to warn you, this one's pretty out there, because a Japanese doctor of alternative medicine claims that he can drink good or bad thoughts. And this happens, he says, when he looks at the glass of water and it forms appealing or ugly crystals. His name is Morasu Emoto, and he claims that humans' speech or thoughts have a major effect on water. He believes that it all depends on the nature of how you direct your thoughts or speech at it. So, for example, when the water is frozen, its crystals will be beautiful. Or it can be ugly depending on whether the thoughts that you direct to them are positive or negative. Believe us, we have no idea how this works, but he does back some sides behind it because humans are made 75% of water, and humans do feel a lot. So technically, water is feeling. We're just not so sure if the cup of water over there is angry or sad. Number 12. Russian Sleep Experiment Based on this title alone, you can guess that some things went wrong in this next experiment because it's called the Russian Sleep Experiment, and that doesn't sound too cozy. This could be the most shocking story you've ever heard. Because of a group of five men who were deemed enemies of the state, imprisoned in a secret Soviet military research facility, back in 1947 they were exposed to a sleep-inhibiting stimulant. So that means that they gave them something in a pill form probably, which stopped them from sleeping. As you may or may not know, the human body needs sleep. So this doesn't sound like it's heading in the right direction. Now the authority has made the nice promise of actually freeing the prisoners after 30 days if they completed the experiment. So that would be 30 days with no sleep. Of course, on day 15, they turned off the stimulant and opened the lock chamber only to find the scene of absolute mayhem. One prisoner was found dead and others had suffered various forms of extreme self-mutilation, including disembowelment. It's believed that some of the survivors may have developed an inhuman strength and resistance to drugs and sedatives. This may have caused them to murder one of the soldiers who attempted to remove them from the room. Fortunately, there's a rumor that the story may have never even happened. It may have just been the interest of father that it got transferred over too many times and had become believed because of how shared it had become. After all, the story does seem a little too gruesome to be reality. But at the same time, if this happened, that's pretty insane. It makes you appreciate sleep a whole lot more. Number 11. New Coke. Sometimes overconfidence is a thing, and it usually happens when someone or something reaches its peak of success and then decides to try something new. There are two ways this can go. It can go perfectly great and be another success for them, or it can be an ultimate disaster. This is what the case was when Coke was at its peak and then decided to create a whole new flavor. It was such a disaster that whenever someone tried something new, it would be coined as the new Coke. Because the new Coke was a definitive flop, about 30 years ago in 1985, Coca-Cola announced the change to its nearly century-old formula. Keep in mind that there was a formula that wasn't broken. It was doing just fine. Better than fine. It was doing great. They claimed that new Coke would have a smoother and sweeter taste. It would be similar to Diet Coke. But of course, it would be sweetened with corn syrup. The funny thing is that the market researchers and posters were sure that it would be a hit. Coca-Cola had been at the top of its game at the time. It was beating Pepsi, but Pepsi was almost catching up. And when the new Coke came out, a poll showed that only 13% of the drinkers liked it. 13% is low. Because of some grassroots campaigns and a lot of complaints, Coke went back to its old formula. They even had a whole commercial where the president of the company got on TV and said we're bringing it back. Quite a story, huh? Hey, at least they tried. Number 10. Sleeping in a jar. It's a shame when experiments go wrong because most experiments start with the best intentions. It's usually when they discover something new or learn something about what's been experimented on. And a lot of experiments do go well. They turn out results that change the course of history. Some experiments even become world famous. That was what this YouTube scientist Curtis Bout thought when he decided to try to live in a tiny biodome for three days. Unfortunately for this guy, he was dead wrong. 
His intention was good. He wanted to teach the world to love science and gave his followers an important lesson in the process. If you're living dangerously on the edge, stop your experiment immediately. Initially, he had announced that he was constructing a 10 foot by 10 foot biodome and he would try to live inside the airtight structure for three whole days, 72 hours. Inside the biodome would be 200 plants and he hoped that it would be effective enough to give him fresh oxygen. So yeah, he didn't last that long. Instead of lasting 72 hours, it took 15 hours before carbon dioxide levels rose to dangerous levels. Somehow, we had no idea how he deemed it a success. The way that he spun it was that he wanted people to understand how the environment works on a deeper level. But it seems like most people already knew if you secluded yourself in a bubble with no air, you would run out of it. But at least he confirmed it. This story brings a whole new definition to YouTube scientists. Number 9. Identical Strangers We've seen how experiments can be detrimental to someone's health. Sometimes experiments do go a little bit too far. Physically, there are times that people don't come out the same. But what about emotionally? And no, we're not talking about the emotions of water. We're talking about the emotions of people. What happens when the family gets separated without even knowing it? Now what happens if a set of twins get separated without even knowing it? That's what happened in a controversial scientific experiment conducted by a child psychiatrist, Dr. Peter B. Neubauer. What happened was that a set of twins, which were boys, had been separated and none of the adopted parents were told about the study nor of the existence of the other triplets. Several years later, when Robert Chafin started to attend college in 1980, he wildly confused to find that people thought they already knew him. It seemed like one giant prank, but then he realized there was a guy named Eddie but a student who had left the previous year before going to another college. So Robert set out to meet this Eddie who had seemingly stolen his identity. This all occurred through a mutual friend who knew that they were both adopted. That's when he found out that he was a twin. And it gets crazier because a man named David Kelman had seen the story on the news and recognized his face in theirs. This is when David contacted his brothers and this is proof that all experiments should happen. Number 8. Cannonball Experiment Just like with the Russian sleep experiment, there's just some that you know right from the title went wrong. For example, the Cannonball Experiment, but at first glance it makes you scratch your head because it comes from the show Mythbusters and when you see a come off a cannonball being shot through a wall, you kind of wonder what's going on. What was the point of this one? Well, the truth is, on the show Mythbusters, they were experimenting and fired a cannonball that went severely off course and flew right through a residential neighborhood. It punched a hole in the house and eventually hit a parked car. Luckily, no one was hurt. And to clarify, the show wasn't just firing cannonballs at will. They were at the Alameda Sheriff's Department bomb range and being supervised by a trained bomb technician. But things went a little haywire and one cannonball went where it wanted to go. This is the definition of a failed experiment. But again, luckily, no one got hurt. Number 7. MK Ultra. Sometimes it's not just private organizations and scientists who conduct experiments. This was the case with the Russian sleep experiment. But it's also sometimes the CIA. This one feels almost illegal to speak about, but it was called MK Ultra. And it was a top secret CIA project in which the agency held hundreds of clandestine experiments. Sometimes those experiments were on unwitting US citizens. They did this to see whether or not US citizens were using LSD and other drugs and said to use mind control capabilities. And instead of just occurring for one month, MK Ultra lasted from 1953 to 1973. Details then came out of this experiment in 1975 when the congressional investigation into the widespread illegal CIA activities brought the project to the surface. The project involved more than 150 human experiments, and they all involved psychedelic drugs, paralytics, and electroshock therapy. We already know experiments can go wrong, but what we're also learning is that decades ago, these experiments were a lot less restricted. Maybe it's a good thing that we live in the time that we do now or else who knows what kind of psychedelic drug we'd all be on. Number 6. Biosphere Remember the man who tried to live 72 hours in a biodome? Well, now we have a couple of people who tried to live in a biosphere, and this experiment went a little better than the last because in 1991, a group of eight people had isolated themselves for two years straight, and they did it all in the biosphere. It was a giant dome, 
a closed system biosphere that was intended to be self-sufficient, and the people that lived there for two years called themselves Biospherians. They wore space-age jumpsuits. While in this biosphere, they grew their crops, they cycled waste and had their air. This was all done to see if humans could sustain themselves in such an environment. Now we should have clarified that it went well at first, but then the participants started to go mad. That was the only problem. Food had become an issue. They were calorie deficient. Most of their exciting meals involved potatoes. Another problem that arose was the oxygen levels. Although it lasted more than 15 hours, eventually the biosphere met the same problem in the fact that carbon dioxide started to build up. Some of the crew even started getting sleep apnea. Eventually, it's the experiment went on to the participants all said they started to feel like captive primates. What we learned from this experiment is that anything dealing with a sphere or biodome usually doesn't end well for the participants. Number 5. Mouse Utopia The term mouse utopia sounds like something awesome. It also sounds like mice have found a way to make a society all to themselves, but that's not the case because the experiment turned into more of a mouse apocalypse and it spelled out something terrible for humanity because a lot of the problems and experiments happened because of overpopulation and that's happening to the earth today. So what happened with this mouse utopia experiment? A scientist took four breathing pairs of mice and then placed them inside a self-proclaimed utopia. The utopia itself had been designed to eliminate problems that would lead to death in the wild. They were given plenty of access to limitless food which worked through 16 hoppers. It would be accessed via tunnels and could feed up to 25 mice at a time. There were also plenty of water. They didn't have to worry about where to sleep. Its nesting material was given. Even when it came to weather, it was kept at a comfortable 68 degrees. For mice, that's a perfect temperature, and only the healthiest mice were put into the experiment at the start. One other perfect element of the utopia was that there were no predators, so the experiment started pretty well. Given that the mice didn't have to look for food, they just had a lot of sex. And then about every 55 days, the population doubled. Eventually, the population hit 620, and unfortunately, this is when the population began to hit problems. The mice had, for whatever reason, split off into groups, and when the mice in the groups could not find a role to play, they found themselves with nowhere to go. Usually, when this happens to mice and they can't find the role, they leave, but given that this was a utopia, they weren't allowed to leave. This almost led to a type of mice depression amongst those who couldn't find the role. They would just allow themselves to be attacked, and when they weren't being attacked, they did the attacking, and then this led to the alpha male mice getting more aggressive. Mother mice would start to just leave their babies and not care for them at all. This began the downfall of the utopia. The population had stopped growing at around 2200. Many of them stopped being interested in meeting altogether. So a critique of this experiment was that the problem may have not been adequate resources, but how those resources had been allocated. Either way, it's a pretty depressing experiment. So we would end this one by telling you to just imagine Mickey Mouse. Number 4. Time Warp Cave even when an experiment can seem overwhelmingly cruel, it still turns up some pretty interesting results. For example, what happens when you put a man in a cave for an extended period with no social interaction and no clocks? You'd think that he would go a little crazy, and that did happen with this next one, but not as crazy as you would think. It made the man a lot more appreciative of the things that he would get after the experiment. Basic things like human interaction and sunlight, in 1972, it was a 33-year-old French geologist who began experimenting in the Midnight Cave near Rio, Texas. He was in there from February until September, six months, and he remained isolated in a large cave chamber 440 feet from the entrance. He didn't have many furnishings, but he did have a bed, table, chair, and various machines for science experiments. He was given a lot of frozen food and about 800 gallons of water. Now, some notable things happened here. Because he had no clocks, he averaged 26-hour days and just went to sleep whenever he felt like it. His view on interactions also changed. At first, he hated hearing the sound of mice. He even killed a colony of them when he first started. But then, as time went on, he craved interactions. And when he heard about a mouse, he was so appreciative and wanted to keep it as a pet. He also had a telephone in his cave to keep in contact with the scientist. At first, it was just some routine things, 
but then over time he started to resent the phone because it represented a freedom that he no longer had. Now where this experiment was kind of terrible was the fact that he would leave with terrible vision afterwards. And he also had a few body pains that never went away. But his outlook had changed. He would never take for granted human interaction ever again. Number 3. Baby Chimp Imagine growing up with a monkey as your sibling. This was the case when one man simultaneously raised a chimp and a baby in the same way to see what would happen. When treated like a human, the monkey acted like one. But of course, the monkey's physiology and development held her back. It all started in 1931 when a comparative psychologist named Winthrop Niles Kellogg and his wife had a baby. They also adopted a baby chimpanzee and they wanted to raise that baby chimpanzee alongside their baby boy Donald. The plan behind this was to see how the environment would influence development. When you take a chimpanzee out of the wild and raise it like a baby, it proved to turn up some interesting facts. And the two raised the babies in the same way. They ran some tests on both and for a while the monkey was advancing quicker than the baby. But eventually the baby had a cognitive wall and there was no amount of training or nurturing that could overcome the fact that, well, it was a monkey. And then the experiment ended abruptly with no explanation. The Kelloggs didn't tell anyone why, and the monkey was given back to the Orange Park primate colony. It was put through a gradual rehabilitation process, and it left people wondering, why did the experiment end so sharply? Some people think that it was because the parents had gotten sick of raising both a monkey and a baby. Another possibility is the fact that the monkey became too aggressive. And the third assumption, a little bit weirder, is that Donald began to copy the monkey. And that's when the Kelloggs realized that things needed to change. I guess you could say they stopped monkeying around. Number 2. Stanford Prison Experiment This next one on our list is one of the more popular experiments gone terrible. The Stanford Prison Experiment saw role playing taken to a whole new level. It all started when a scientist named Zimbardo wanted to study the roles people play in prison situations. So he converted a basement within the Stanford University of Psychology building into a mock prison. He then put out an advertisement for people to participate in the study. There were 24 men accepted into the experiment and were given $15 a day to take part. Prisoners were treated like every other criminal. They were arrested at their homes without warning and taken to the local police station. They were even fingerprinted, photographed and booked. They were then blindfolded and taken to the psychology department where the experiment was held. Everything was taken away from them, including their clothes. They were given all new identities. Everything started fine. The ones who were given the roles of police had acted accordingly. But over time, the abuse of power started to wear down the participants who played the criminals. It got so out of hand that the experiment needed to be stopped. This was a true testament to identities are changed depending on what roles someone is in. And when you're given too much power and no oversight, things can get hairy. Number 1. McDonald's for every meal Okay, maybe we lied about that last experiment being one of the most popular because the movie Super Size Me has been seen by millions around the world. It's a movie where a man named Morgan Spurlock decided to eat only McDonald's for every meal for an extended period. It started okay aside from the fact that he typically hated that type of food. He had to get over it because at first he was throwing up and then once he got into the thick of things he began actually liking the food and craving it. But that didn't take away from the fact that his breathing was worse and he was sweating a lot more. By the end of the experiment, his doctorates had told him that he was close to messing up his health and it took him a while to get back into shape. As it turns out, eating McDonald's for every meal isn't the healthiest, but their Big Macs are just so good. And there you have it, sometimes experiments can be for the best and sometimes they can be for the worst. But one thing they always do is turn up results. Whether they're good or bad, you have to expect that things can go haywire from time to time. Whether you're only eating McDonald's every single day or you're watching mice descend into chaos, we hope that when the experiments happen in the future, they'll be a little bit safer.